third service. Oh. They haven't had any <laughs> coffee either. We're going to change the coffee and the move to espresso to only. All right? We need to have a heart to heart. Y'all need to wake up. Time we is have it? What time is donuts, it? Donuts, which has is this? sugar in it, and we have coffee, which is caffeinated, and it gets you really jacked up. It does for moments, and then you crash. We but I hope you crash after our service. Let me just tell okay? you my secret. We have incredible volunteers that keep Pastor Brad coffeeed up, <laughs> makes him say silly things, makes you laugh because of this right here, and it's free. Fresh and it's free. It's fresh and free. Fresh and free every service. That's so get yourself some. Awesome. Well, we are excited, obviously, and somewhat of Smart Alex, but we are your pastors, and we're excited this morning that we are starting a new series, and it's called 42. Now, you may think to yourself, 42? Like, what's that? That's just a number. It is just a number, but it does have some really big significance that we're going to explain in a moment. But before we dive in, I want to just give you a quick update on our building. You guys got a flash in about two minutes of the last 12 years. So if you didn't know what you were watching, from that mobile home all the way through that tour of a building that doesn't even exist yet, that was our story, all right? And what I want to tell you, it's been a long time coming, but our building arrived Friday and is laying out in the grass right now. That's where you clap, okay? I need those signs. I need you guys. A clapping to... sign. All right, guys upstairs, I need those... you to tell them when to clap. That yeah. way they know, and I'll have to tell them, okay? Now, This was tomorrow, filmed before a live studio audience, and then there's a lighted sign in the back. And it says clap, clap, says clap, 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 clap. Applause. Okay? That's right, We're applause. We're going to one of those. Cheer right now. Go crazy. So, yeah! Yes. Yes, good practice. That's that was kids' good. ministry. Y'all are good. Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., they're going to start standing our building. Now you can give God a hand. You know... Unless you've got your feet in the trenches out there and maybe you realize how long this has been coming. Guys, this has been a delayed thing for quite some time. I don't know if you live around here, but it has rained for 40 days and 40 nights and flooded everything in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And every construction project has been delayed, including we were ours. About to, we were about to use the materials to build an ark. Yeah, exactly. Instead. We're like, we'll have church in the ark, you know, because it's all the rain. But we're finally here. It's finally time. God's timing is perfect. It's never our timing. Say, it's never, never. our timing. Never. God may show you in your own life that he's about to do something. God may lay out a promise for you and you're holding on to it. And as soon as he speaks, you're like, now, God, now would be perfect. Go ahead now. And God's timing is never our timing. Just remember that. But we are super excited that tomorrow the beams will begin to stand. And as you come over the next three weeks, you're going to see the building you saw in that video become a reality right behind this wall. We're so excited. Well, this morning as we dive in to 42, I just want to tell you, if you're a person who likes the mystical, you like the prophetic, you like the supernatural moving of God, you are going to love this series. And if you're in this room and you say, I don't have a clue what you just said, those three words, I don't even know what they mean. By the end of this series, you will. Because from the beginning of time, when God began to speak the world into existence, to this very day, God has been speaking to people. God wants to speak to each and every one of us, and he does it different. For some people, he speaks in visions. For some spe people, he speaks in dreams. For some people, it's signs and it's wonders. And for some, it's even numbers, as we're going to talk to you about today. After first service, I went to my office for just a moment to just refresh and get my brain on before a new service. And one of my daughters walked in. And she said, Mom, that was such a great service. I said, yeah. She said, yeah, I slept all the way through it. I said, what? I'm like, you did not. And she said, well, actually, I did. But you know what's interesting is while I was sleeping, it was like God gave me a vision. I said, really? And she's dead serious. God gave me a vision. I said, yeah, what did he say? He, she said, well, it was interesting. It was a vision, but it was like your voice. I was like, yeah, you think you are so funny. So you know what? My daughters will get quizzed when church is over today right. after four to see if they pay yeah. attention. Be closing your eyes and calling it spiritual. Exactly. God's downloading when you're sleeping, a vision. You are clearly sleeping. That's right. Anyway. But today. Today, we're going to talk to you about how God speaks to us through numbers. And this number, 42, is very significant in what God is doing in our life and in the life of this church. This morning, Amos 4, 13, we're going to start right here, and it says this. For behold, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind, 
who declares to man what his thought is. Pause. The one who created the mountains and the wind, the God of the universe, actually wants you and I to understand his thoughts. Just pause and ponder that for a moment. Our lives are very chaotic, no matter who you are. Our lives are very busy in the culture that we live. God wants to download his thoughts into your life, but so often we haven't slowed down long enough to actually pay attention and listen. It's like we have a spiritual deficiency. How many ever have thought that your kids had a listening deficiency? Any parent with me? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you thought you clearly told them to take out the trash, but apparently you did not. Where was because the breakdown? When you came home, it was still the there, overflowing. It's still there. And I think that God does the same thing. He's like, I have been speaking to you over and over and putting signs out in front of you, and I'm flashing right here in front of your face, and somehow you are like spiritually deaf, and you're missing it. And this morning, we want to help you to understand that the God of the universe wants to speak his thoughts into your mind. If only we'll just stop and listen. So this morning, I want to ask you to just bow your heads, and we're just going to quiet our spirits and ask God to do that in this service. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are not a God of confusion, but God, you want to get our attention. You want to speak to us. God, through your word, Father, you have laid out so clearly, God, through signs, through wonders, through visions, through dreams, through numbers. God, you speak to your people. So this morning, Lord, I pray over every ear in this room. God, I pray that we would quiet our spirits and that we would be ready and open to hear what you would speak to our hearts. God, I pray that we would not only hear it, but we would apply it to our life. God, that we would be challenged, God, and it would bring about change. Lord, that we would look more like you and impact our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think the mistake a lot of us make is thinking that you have to be a pastor or a Bible teacher uh, or somebody who understands the deep things of God to be able to hear God speak, and that's just simply not so. I believe God is always trying to talk to you and I. As pastors, for many years, I think probably the most common thing that people come to us with is, how do I hear from God? How do I hear what God is trying to speak and say to my life? And I think that I can wrap it up very quickly in, in, and just kind of go back to what you said. I think a lot of times we just can't make ourselves slow down and listen because we're wired for worship. Right. We were wired to be in God's presence and to not only worship God but hear from God. We all have ears that have been designed to hear God speak to us. The truth is we just don't slow down. And as Misty said, he speaks to you and I in different ways. Uh, God has always spoken to me many times in dreams. Uh, and I, I have a theory about that. I think it's because I get moving so fast during the day. Go, 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 go. The only time that I slow down is when I'm asleep. So God has to, like, this is one of those whack you upside the mouth with a two-by-four kind of talking to you. That's how God has to deal with me is, look, Brad, whack, I got to get your attention. When you're least expecting it, when you're asleep and you have your mouth shut, you're not thinking about anything else, I want to talk to you. And he does that, but he might speak differently with you. The, what I would encourage you with is just open your eyes and open your ears. I promise you, he's talking. You just have to listen. Amos chapter 4, verse 13. Did you already read it? See, this is third service. And I have coffee. I'm going to get some. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I read it, Did Pastor you really Brad. just read that? I did. I tell you what, we I are did. off to a good start this morning. We are. <laughs> so let me share with you one way that God has been showing us something really significant through numbers for the last nine years. It's going to blow your mind. So one night, I'm at the computer, and I'm trying to set up a personal Gmail account, and I'm looking for the right you know, name for the Gmail, for the account. And I'm going through all these, seems like hundreds of options and nothing, everything's stupid. Nothing makes sense. I'm like, there, there cannot be a million Brad Taylor Heltons on the planet. Like, this doesn't make any sense. How many people have my middle name? So I'm, look, I'm trying all these different combinations, and it's throwing out all these wacky numbers at the end of B.T. Helton. So I finally got down to this one that I decided on, but I was frustrated because it really didn't make any sense. And I'm kind of OCD, like, bad. And if something isn't just right, it drives me cray-cray. 
cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs if it doesn't make sense. And so I landed on this one email, and it didn't make any sense, and it was driving me cray-cray, okay? So the email that I ended up with was this, bthelton42 at gmail.com. Now, don't email me, or you can but I really don't check it. So go ahead if you he want. He won't have a response. I won't <laughs> respond to you. But you can go ahead and email me if you want. So that night I end up with this email address. And the next day Misty said, why did you pick that? That I, is. I did. And here's why. Not that I'm just super critical. But like we talked about that in the last series. Wait. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Normally, if you pick a number, it has some significance. It's like the year you were born. Right. It's like your birth month. A number that was it's on a, a num- jersey. Exactly. From a something team you really play important on. to you. And so I said, you know, I thought maybe I had missed something nope. in all the years we had been married. And Net I was like, nothing. Brad, what's 42? And he goes, I don't know. And I'm like, why just stick it on your Gmail then? You know what I'm all saying? All the other ones and were he goes, more stupid than that one. Because it like popped up there and I'm like, why didn't you put backspace? And like change it instead of just landing on it. I tried. Sure you did. I bet you did. It Whatever. wouldn't work. So for years he's had this email and it's like, what is 42? No, that why? night when, Nine I, years when ago, I punched it in, I settled on it. God spoke to my heart. Seriously. And he said, 42 is significant. I'm like, God, what is it? And he said, when you turn 42, you're going to enter into a significant season in your life. I'm like, whoa. And honestly, I, I mean, you know, you, your, your wheels start turning, you start thinking, what could it be? And I'm thinking bucket list stuff. I'm thinking, okay, I love to write. I love creative, you know, writing. And I thought maybe, maybe I'll write a book. By the time I'm 40, maybe when I'm 40, when I turn 42 years old, maybe my first book will come out. I don't know what it's going to be about. That's going to be awesome. And maybe, maybe that's it. And then I got to thinking maybe, you know, maybe my thoughts started turning like creepy. Like, well, maybe it's not good. Maybe it's bad. Maybe, maybe I'm going to die. I, I thought, what if I'm going to die? And I go through this whole, like, for years, for thinking, years, you man, got stuck on this. I'm like gonna have to start being nice to my kids, and like, I'm gonna have to get it together. Like seriously, and, and so you know, up in the, the life little... insurance policy, and thinking if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna get you set right here, <laughs> make doing... you a millionaire, no, baby. No, I'm not I'm doing gonna, that. Yeah, I'm gonna no, stop. Set so... you up. Fist bump it. Just bump it. Yeah. There see? we go. So but the not year's that not I'm over. not cool, but I feel like I would be endorsing that right there. I don't want to endorse that. It got to where, like, seriously, it was bogging him it's, so much it was freaky. that I was like, he started freaking me out. You know what I mean? And when you speak that kind of junk into existence, you put fear in your heart. And it was like, stop saying that. I don't know what 42 means, but it doesn't mean you're going to die. So like, knock it off. Honey, all right? it's something serious. It, it God serious. told me it's really, really big. It's serious. But what he didn't tell you is that last November, November 21st, if you want to take a note, was Pastor Brad's birthday, and he turned 42. Okay. We're in the year. Okay, so since then, like for the last nine years, all this crazy stuff has been happening. Everywhere I turn, the number 42 pops up out of nowhere. Like, almost daily, it's creepy, freaky. Okay, a couple months ago, just one little example, a couple months ago, Misty and I don't watch a whole lot of TV. Uh, we, we will, if we come home late at night, we, we might do a grilled smoky jalapeno burger and watch Fixer Upper. At midnight. At midnight. We might <laughs> do that. Rehearsal. Fixer Upper, that's it. But one night, it was a Sunday night, we were trying to get some just rest, and, and we were going through um, Netflix, and I saw this cool movie about Jackie Robinson the baseball player. And I'm like, man, that looks really cool. Let's watch that movie. And so here it is. And watch the whole movie. When it got done, it, sh- it, it puts the, the title screen up on the TV so you can look for your next selection. And I'm thinking, Four- 42, honey, would you look at that right there. After I had watched the movie, I realized, man, now I know the movie came out in 2013, but we just watched it two months ago after I turned 42 years old, during the season that God said he was going to do something significant. So that's just one little example. Or maybe I'll be at the gas station, and, the, and all, you know, the, the gas will be going, and then click, and the pump stops, and I look, at, and then boom, $42. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Everywhere I turn, last and night. And every time it happens, he calls me. He's hey, like, you're not going to believe this. Like this. 
I'm like, why would I not believe it? It's been happening for nine it's years. Freaky. I, I was telling Jacob Hardesty in the back, whoop, whoop. I was talking to him about all this crazy stuff. And I went in, and he, he left, and he went home. I went to my office, and I was working, and I was just thinking about our conversation. I looked down, and my phone's on 42%. And I'm like, screenshot, send that to you. I was like, I told you. This is crazy, like crazy stuff. It happens everywhere we turn constantly. We're seeing this number 42. So God, what are you up to? What are you doing? And the year's not over. I might die. No. I don't know if I will, but if I do, I'm ready to go. No. I love you. We're you gonna, are not leaving me with four we're gonna, children that are a teenager. And we're going to up that insurance no. policy. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready to go, guys. Don't worry about me. I'm ready to go. So, uh, so I want to show you, though, uh, God is always trying to speak to us through the Word of God. He uses all these different magnificent ways of communicating with us, but he does it a lot of times. He'll do it through numbers as signs, and numbers have great significance in Scripture. I want to give you a few examples real quick. The number one in Scripture uh, represents the oneness of our God. God is one. He's three individuals, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but he's wrapped up into one awesome God. So when we see that Number one, in biblical significance, we're talking about unity of the Godhead. The number three is a number of completeness and balance. And everywhere you see three, you see this completeness or um, uh, balance taking place. So you see uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the the, the patriarchs, the fathers of of Israel. Um, You see uh, Jesus... He, on the, on the third day, it says, he goes into uh, a, to a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and there's a marriage that takes place on the third day. He goes to the tomb, and on the third day, he comes up out of the grave. And so you see all these significant numbers all through Scripture that mean, that have beautiful pictures behind them. The number seven, of course, many of you may know that that is God's number. That is the biblical foundation. You see the number seven pulled all the way through Scriptures from beginning to end. You can see that God created the earth and everything in it in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested and gave us Sabbath. He gave us seven days in the week. And you'll see lots of numbers that God uses like 70 times seven. You'll see these numbers all through scripture because God is trying to say something. So numbers have significance. So what I decided to do was kind of dig around a little bit in the Word of God and figure out, okay, what's, what spiritual significance? What is the biblical meaning of the number 42? So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour and show you what 42 means in Scripture. Let's start at Joshua chapter 4 and verse 5. I'm going to kind of set the scene for you. It's going to blow your mind. Look at your neighbor. Say he's going to blow your mind. Blow your mind. That's what I'm talking about. So here we are in Joshua chapter 4 verse 5. And Moses is handed off the reins uh, with the children of Israel, and they're making their way to possess the promised land of God. Now, here's what's really crazy. In chapter 4, verse 5, this is the 42nd time in Scripture that Joshua's name is mentioned. And at the same time, they have just left their 41st encampment while they were wandering in the wilderness. And they are on their way to cross the River Jordan to go into Jericho to their 42nd encampment in this passage right here. But I, I want to I take you into the story just a little bit and show you what's happening in the story so you can capture the biblical meaning behind the number, all right? So they're, they're making their way across the river, but the river is raging. The waters are crazy, and they're looking at it, and they're like, there's no way we can cross this river, but God is up to something. Let's look and see what happens in chapter 3, verse 15. He says, and those who bore the ark, which is the presence of God, in a box. I don't have time to go into it, but it's really cool. On two poles, in a box, God dwelt with them. His presence was among them, and they came to the Jordan with this box, the Ark of the Covenant. And when the feet of the priests who bore the Ark, God's presence, dipped in the edge of the water, listen to what happened. It says, the waters which came down from upstream stood still. Say, stood still. The waters were raging. It was actually flooding this time of year. The waters were above both banks. And when the priests stepped out in the water with the presence of God, 
the waters stopped. In fact, you look into it, and, and, and the waters actually piled up and stacked up and made a wall upstream. Here's what's really crazy and cool about this at the same time, is that when we, when we make God's presence our priority, and we decide, you know what, God, I want to hear from you, and I want to walk with you, and I want you just to be with me everywhere I go. You know what he's going to do in your life? He's going to allow you to step into situations that you think are just seemingly impossible. He's going to allow you to step into situations that you, you look at it, and you might be terrified by your human eye. You might be incredibly intimidated by what's in front of you, but you know that with God's presence, he is going to go before you and he's going to make a way for you when it seems like there is no way. He's going to do that when you make his presence a priority. So that's what they were doing. The waters stand up. And then you know what Joshua said? He said, I'm going to, I want you to pick 12 men. That number is significant representing the 12 tribes of Israel. I want them to carry 12 large stones across the river, and I want you to establish a memorial for yourself so that one day your children and your children's children are going to look at these 12 stones, and they're going to say, what happened there? Because there's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to tell your children, there was a moment in time where God did something supernatural in our lives. And I believe God wants to do that with you in your life. If you'll just trust him and you'll believe that he's wanting to speak to you and he's wanting to give you a significant season yourself, that if you'll step out, the waters will stop. And that you'll be able to tell your children, you're not going to believe what God did at this time in our lives. You're not going to believe. Let me just tell you, I, we were so scared. It seemed impossible. But man, did God go. Man, did God show up. Man, did God do a miracle. Man, did God do some amazing things. So what happened after that? They crossed this dry river Jordan and they make their way to Jericho. Their final 42nd encampment. And they come to the walls. The city is completely surrounded by these walls, and now they have one more obstacle before they finalize their journey with 42 encampments. That's right. So God speaks to them, and he tells them to do something very crazy, all right? He tells them to march around the city of Jericho seven times, once a day for seven days, and on the seventh day, march around the city of Jericho seven times. What was God's perfect number? Seven. Good. You're listening. Okay. So he tells them, do this crazy thing. Now, what is also interesting when you read the story in Joshua is that he tells them, not only do I want every one of you, all of you, like a couple million people, all right, to march around this entire city. It had to have taken them like all day long. It was miles wide. But he said, I want you to do it in complete and total silence. Now, what's interesting about that is this. Oftentimes in our life, God will speak to you, and whether it's in a vision or a dream or a sign, God speaks to you, and when he does, a lot of times what he's asking you to do seems crazy. When you hear it yourself, you're like, God, that can't be you. And sometimes we even miss it, all right? Sometimes we even, we talk ourselves out of something God wants to do because it appears so crazy. But listen, he told them to do it in silence. Why did he do that? Because you realize that when we begin to talk, we talk ourselves out of God's promises. Not only that, but on top of that wall, all around the city of Jericho, were people from inside Jericho. And as they were watching, these guys walk around the wall, they were mocking them and taunting them and saying, really? Your God said to walk around? Like, what do you think is going to happen? You think you're really going to come in and possess this city? See, in your own life, when you step out, and you know what? When they did that, when they stepped out, you know they had to be terrified. Stepping into floodwaters, who does that? We all know better than that. When they stepped out, you know they were scared out of their mind. But at the same time, they were acting in obedience. See, when we step out in obedience, people around us, they can't understand because God didn't speak to them. And so all of a sudden, they start running their mouth to you, and you begin to want to do what? You want to respond. Because we're all so good at it. You know what? Some better than others. Some of us are quick. You know what? Our mouth gets us into trouble. But God said, look, I'm just going to take care of that. I want you to be quiet. You're not going to respond to them. You're not going to talk yourself out of anything. You're going to do exactly what I said. Because here's what's interesting. God had promised, after they had journeyed now, 42 different encampments, they were going to go in and possess the promised land. But what's interesting is that God didn't take the city of Jericho and wipe out all the people before his people arrived. He said, look, you're going to go into a war, but I am going to do the fighting. 
to follow me. Any time in your life that God is going to allow you to possess a promise, before you get the promise, I guarantee you, there's going to be a battle. You don't have to do the fighting. God's going to do it for you. But you are going to go through a battle. In the last year, since Brad turned 42, and we roll into this season of significance that we've been seeing 42 over and over and over, we have gone through the most spiritual warfare that we've ever faced in our entire life. And I'm not talking, we don't have time to go into great detail, but to the point, if we ever wanted to walk away, it's been the last nine months. If we ever even contemplated, I'm very talented. I could go somewhere and get a job, and it would be a whole lot better than what I'm doing right now, because the spiritual warfare has been so intense. At the same time, we have to keep reminding ourselves that God is going to make us go through the battle before we possess the promise. Let me show you one of the promises that he promised that also had to do with 42. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 45, this is the 42nd time that Peter's name is mentioned in the New Testament. Now, do you know what happened in this verse? The power of the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles, and they received salvation. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because of this. All of your Old Testament is about one bloodline, the Jews, all right? The Israelites, they are the Jewish people. But when Jesus came, they believed he was coming only to save them, the Jews, the bloodline of Israel. But listen, in this moment, he is saying, no, 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 you're missing it. My promise, my promise was that all would receive salvation. Over and over and over, you see this number 42. From the covenant of Abraham, when he was called, to when Jesus came, was 42 generations. You see, everywhere we turn, we see this number. And this morning, we're going to tell you in just a moment what is so significant about it. But this is what God has spoken to our spirit, even before we knew what it meant. Don't miss the significance of a simple number. In Revelation, 42 pops up all over the place, and it's used to measure prophetic time, distances, and dimensions. 42 is all over the place. Pull up that diagram if you want to show. There's just a few different examples right there. I'll begin in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Here we have uh, this angel shows up on the scene, and God wants the angel to measure the temple of God, the building structure. He also wants him to measure the altar uh, which represents the prayers of God's people. It's a spiritual measurement. And he also wants to measure the people themselves, the conditions of their heart as the church or the people of God. It says, then I was given a reed. Say reed. Like a measuring rod. That word reed is very important. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But leave out the court, which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. There we go again. God has separated the Gentiles and the Jews, and he's saying, I have come for all of them. I have come for everyone. And they will tread the holy city, city under the 42 months. So what's really significant about this is that the measuring rod, or the reed, is made up of seven cubits. A cubit is six handbreadths in length. Or another way to say it is the measuring rod, a reed, is 42 handbreadths long. And that is what the angel was using to measure the temple of God, the building structure. It's what he was using to measure the hearts of God or the prayers of God and then the condition of their soul as the church or the body of Christ. I know you're thinking this is pretty deep, but I think it's really But 42 is so significant spiritually in measuring time, in measuring distances, dimensions. And there's there's other scriptures. We go on and on. There's, there's a time where uh, God releases on purpose the beast, which is to attack the people of God. He's been given permission to attack the church for 42 months, for a season. But then there's also a time where God releases two witnesses or two prophets, and they are, for 42 months, they're prophesying, and they're speaking of the salvation and the hope of our God for 42 months. Two months. It's so significant all through the scriptures. And so we look at this and we, we realize, God, you're trying to show us something. I remember one day, you know, guys, this has been a crazy year since I turned 42. 
it's been showing up almost daily, and it's getting to the point about how long did it think it was, maybe three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, we were like, okay, God, we're done. We need to have a God command moment. Uh, you need to tell us what for The mystery is now becoming frustrating and annoying. Okay? And sometimes you just have to have that conversation with God, okay? Not that He cares, because His timing is always going to be perfect. But in this moment, like it was one of those very hard, weighty, battle kind of days, which will happen very often. And Brad was at his desk, and if I remember correctly, he was like praying or crying or something, and it was so, and I was so frustrated. And it doesn't matter, in the middle of the battle, you can't like crawl up in the field position and stay there. You have to keep moving forward. You gotta keep taking ground. And so I'm on the computer and I was emailing someone pertaining to the buildings every single day. As we pass through the people, and as we prepare the experience, and as we prepare to go to camp, and as we prepare for the next big event, we also are building this building. So there's daily things happening. So I'm on my email, and I'm sitting this out, and I'm, to be honest, I'm bam, 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 so take off, okay? And I'm just like, come on, God, you can move differently than this. And as I'm typing, I'm like telling somebody that the building is 60 foot wide by 70 foot long, is 4,200 square feet, and I go, oh my gosh, it's 4,200 square feet, wow, it's the building, and we immediately and I'm like, go, I'm not gonna die, <laughs> we start crying and shaking, because we realize all this time, it was about the promise and the vision of this building. And so for some of you guys, you're like, not so what? But it's not just the building. building. Exactly. It was the fact that it represented the souls, which 42, I just told you, when he gave out the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles, was about that all would come to know Jesus and none would perish. You see, what's also very interesting, and God literally just showed me this in the last service, Brad got that email address in 2010. Guys, in 2010 is when we broke ground right here. Not only did we break ground in 2010, we poured a foundation where we showed up supernaturally in the concrete of this floor. And if you want to be here today, we worked the carpet up. You can see it for yourself. Because we is a symbol of God pouring out upon his people the harvest, a harvest of souls. Guys, God has been since then, since the day we made the decision here to break ground, already prepared for the promise of what's about to come. If you haven't been through a battle, then you know what? You are just getting started. Because if you're new with us, if you're a part of this church, let me just tell you, okay? The children of Israel, when they marched around the city, they all did. They all went. Nobody can stay back. When you are a part of what God's doing, not only are you going to get to be a part of the promise, you're going to be in the battle right along with us. Many families in this church have been facing battles, and they haven't understood the crazy things that have been happening, and the frustration, and the oppression, and the depression, and the stress, and all the craziness of these battles, and they don't get it. Sometimes we think, oh, it's just a coincidence. All this crazy stuff happening. No, it's not a coincidence. Let me tell you what it is. You are a part of Mount Maneuver's church, and the enemy has a hit on our head. Why is that? Because you don't see in every other church 20 newcomers coming through the door every single week in rural America. You don't see 68 people at a fireworks display giving their life to Jesus. Why? Because we're awesome? No. Because God supernaturally said this is our time. Because this is our part of revival that you and I get to be a part of. But in being a part of the promise also means you're a part of the battle. So just realize that the enemy is out to take you out. Just like he's been trying to take us out, he has been trying to take families out. He's been trying to literally pick them off, and here's what he does. He'll start at the head, and he'll work his way through. He starts with us, and if he can't take us out, he'll continue to heal us. Well, he goes into your family and tries to bring destruction, tries to destroy your marriage, tries to destroy your relationship with your kids, tries to destroy your finances. You've got to realize this is a battle, and it's not over. We're only in the middle as we are getting ready, as I told you, to stand the building tomorrow. It's not going to be easier for a little while, guys. I'm sorry you attend here right now. Don't leave, because you want to be a part of the promise. You want to be a part of what God's going to do. But God's promise is that this building was going to stand, and we are going to see people in the droves give their life to Jesus. And guys, that's what it's all about. That's why Jesus left heaven and came to earth so that we can spread the hope that he came to give. So all the other members I've shared with you had 
summarize spiritual connotations or meanings. You ready for what 42 means? 42 means moment of arrival. With Joshua, it also means time of war and battle, but it also means time of preservation. Moment of arrival. I think it's interesting when we establish the campaign, this is our time raising the funds to build the building. This is our time. This is our moment of arrival. This is God's moment. We didn't know what we were saying. We didn't realize what we were saying, but this is our moment of arrival. This is the season of significance that God set aside years and years ago. He said, when we get to that point, I'm going to do something great among you. I'm going to do something supernatural. When Joshua brought the children of Israel out, they were. this was their moment of arrival. It was the 42nd encampment. This was the moment where they arrived to Jericho and God handed them their inheritance of the promised land. When the Holy Spirit was poured out, that was the Holy Spirit's moment of arrival where he said, I'm pouring out my spirit on everybody and salvation is for everybody. Over and over and over, God shows us that this is his time. 42. 4,200 square feet. God is doing something significant in this season. Nehemiah really does. So you see all throughout the word how God does this. And in the book of Nehemiah, we're going to talk about this throughout the series. There's a story where God has taken a guy. After 90 years, the children of Israel had been exiled out of the land of Jerusalem. And the city walls had been torn down, which meant they were left very vulnerable to massive attacks from the enemy. God raises up this guy by the name of Nehemiah. And he sends him back to do what? To rebuild the wall. And the Bible talks about, in Nehemiah chapter 2, how it was going to take everybody. Everybody was going to play a part in rebuilding the wall. And God is beginning to show us this year, from the beginning of the year, that it was going to take all hands on deck and we were going to do two things. He said, don't get distracted. With all the other things going on, there's a lot of moving pieces. You focus on two things. You build a building and you build people. And through all the battles and through all the attacks, we keep focused on this. We're building a building and we're building people. Why? Because it's about giving the hope of Jesus to the rest of the world. Aren't you glad to be a part of what God's doing in this moment at this time? We're building this building. We're seeing people come to Christ like crazy. This is our time. This is a moment of arrival where God says, I'm going to do what I promise. There's going to be a battle, but I'm going to preserve you through it. And I'm going to bring more people. I believe that God hasn't even got started. I believe that when this building is built and it opens up, we're going to expand our space so more families can have a place to experience real life change. And so many more people that we could have ever imagined are going to come to Christ from all over the four state region. Why? So God can be glorified. So people can say yes to hope. So they can say yes to heaven. They are home. And I believe you and I are going to stick together as a church family. And we are going to kick hell right in the teeth. And we're going to show the devil what's up. And we're going to see so many people come to Christ. Get ready for what God is going to do. This is our year. This is our moment. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to understand the vision that you have for our church right now, for such a time as this, for this significant season, that we are to build this building so we can build more people. I pray, God, that we would not only understand this vision, but that we would run with the vision of 42. I pray that we would get it. I pray, God, that it would stir our hearts to action, that we would want to be a part of the great things that you were doing in this very significant season. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you might be in this room and you, maybe you're not confident that there's a place for you in God's kingdom. Maybe you just don't know. I want to ask you, if you were standing before God right now and He says, why should I let you in my heaven? What would you say to Him? Would it be on... on I'm a good person. I would say, that's not going to do it for you. If you say, I, I pray all the time, that's not going to do it for you. If you say, I, I really enjoy going to church, I'm sorry to say, that's not going to do it for you. Here's what God wants. He wants a relationship with you. When you come to a point like I did many years ago, where, where you realize that sin has separated you from God, and you admit it, and you ask Him to forgive you, and you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you confess Him 
as Lord of your life, and you make the commitment to begin living for Him each day, that's when you get it. And so I want to encourage you right now to make this decision if you haven't already. And I would say that this entire message and this whole 42 thing, it's all about you in this moment. That's what it's about. It's about life change. It's about hope. It's about heaven, our home. So how about it? Is that you today? Do you need life change? Do you need heaven? Nobody's looking around, but I want to know who I'm praying for today. If that's you, would you raise your hand in this place? Amen, brother. I see your hand. Amen. Anybody else today? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. I see your hand. I see your hand. Thank you. Anybody else today? Yes to life change. Yes to hope. Thank you, Father God. Open your door wide, God, and receive people today, God, and do your thing. Well, church, you know what to do. Let's pray this prayer together in support of those that have made this decision. Father, I love you. I know I've sinned. And it separated me from you. Please forgive me. Jesus is the Son of God. I confess to the Lord of my life. Help me to live for you. Help me to be different. Never to be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you just pray that prayer, we want to celebrate with you by giving you a gift. It's called the Next Step Kit. You brought it on the left as you exit. This is going to help you know how can I be successful in this new journey with Jesus. Guys, we you put your hands together? Seven people today have given their lives to Jesus. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.